We're going to call the meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one by nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You're welcome. Member Steele? Here. Member Lyon Hall? Here. Member Fredericks? Here. Member Lanford? What? Member Holbrook is absent. Member Dean? Here. Member Lake? Here. Uh, next, we have the uh, Brian Stevens Coldwater High School 2024 Advanced Placement Score Presentation. Thank you, Dr. Lake. Thank you, Board. Appreciate you giving us the time to uh, talk about our AP program at the high school. My name is Brian Stevens, and I'm teaching there for a long time. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to talk to you about our AP program. So maybe I should get a little overview for, for, for folks that may not be familiar. AP stands for Advanced Placement. Uh, it's a program that's set up by the college board. <clears throat> but what it does is sets up a curriculum for different disciplines for students to take a class. And at the end of the year, they take a test that's given globally throughout the world, actually. And they get scores. The scores go from 1 to 5. Uh, 1 is the lowest score. 1 and 2, generally speaking, are scores that are not accepted for college credit. And then three and above are considered to be for college uh, credit. So um, we've been doing pretty well at Coldwater High School for the last few years. And I'm happy to tell you that last year, I think, I'm not absolutely sure, but we had our highest year in terms of tests passed with kids getting threes and above. That's 234 tests. So that comes out to be uh, over 700 college credits. So if you take a student at Michigan State, and you multiply those credits by, uh, I think it's $527 per credit. If a kid went to Michigan State, they would save $377,325. It's an immense savings for our students. And this applies all throughout um, different universities throughout the United States. So we're really happy about that. I think we have a great uh, program going on here. And you may or may not know the AP classes that we actually offer. So when I first got to Coldwater, my first two years, my first year, there were only two classes offered, AP Calculus and AP English Literature. And then I saw that myself, and I said, hey, it'd be great to have an AP Grammar class, so we proposed that, and we got that going the very next year. And then since that time, we've added uh, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Physics, AP Psychology, AP European History, AP US History, AP English Language, then two years ago, we offered uh, um, AP Computer Science Principles, which has been a really great class, a good tech class. I think it counts for credit in science and, and math as well as being elective. And just last year, uh, we had uh, AP Pre-Calculus. Uh, that was the first year that we did that. And then for the last five years or so, I've been also offering up, um, not always my choice, but whatever, <laughs> Uh, AP Comparative Government, so some kids have been doing that as, as an independent study. Uh, I've really been, uh, it's been nice to have Dr. Holt as our principal, and we've had several uh, uh, discussions in regards to actually expanding our AP curriculum. So we're looking at a few different things, and uh, possibly next year we might even pilot a, a couple different classes. So we're really, really excited about that as well, okay? Um, I am very honored to have some of my colleagues here tonight that are teaching various AP classes. So if I could have an AP teacher stand up, please. And if you could, please introduce yourselves and what class you teach. Yeah, I'm Mike McConnell, and I teach AP Psychology. Mark DeMeester, I teach AP Bio. Ryan Sheets, AP Calculus and AP Pre-Calculus. Toby Kirk, I did AP US History <coughs> as an independent study last year. Bob Hostetler, AP Chemistry. Kaylin Moore, AP U.S. History. Thank you. I, I really like to, they all do a great job. They're excellent college. And I really like to uh, kind of uh, throw a shout out to Toby, who taught uh, independent study this year. 
for those of you who don't know, independent study is exactly that. He doesn't make any extra money. He does this on his own time. He does it as a planning period. And the student that he taught um, ended up getting a five, um, the highest possible score you can get. So I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge Toby and the great job he did with that, of course, the year, as well as all of the other teachers that we have here tonight. Um, as we told you before, um, seven out of the 12 uh, of our classes actually were above the global passing average, which uh, is very commendable. And even the classes that didn't quite get there, um, they were, had great scores, maybe just a little bit below, um, but they, they scored extremely well. Okay. So um, really proud of our program. I hope that you are too. I think it's a great um, feather in the cap of cold water schools. And we're looking maybe in the next couple of years to expand on that as well. Um, we, uh, great to, we're looking at doing some alternative things, things that uh, kids wouldn't necessarily have um, access to, maybe not on the traditional AP track, but we're still going to try to see if we can do things for them. Uh, with that said, did you have any questions for us? How many students would you say overall? I'm sure some of them are in multiple AP classes. How many students would you say are in the AP program? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I'd say we probably have 150, 200 <laughs> students, something like that overall. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had 234 kids pass the test. So I should say 234 um, tests passed. I think it's... I'd say about 150, probably. Yeah, something like that. Wonderful. That's great. And just to give you a little bit, we have some parents here that can probably share this as well. So my daughter went to Michigan State uh, this past year, and she got 38 credits here to her. So she is looking at, you know, she thinks she can uh, finish a little further. We'll see. But um, yeah, it's been a real, real. Mark, how many do you have any ideal interest? Yeah, I had. 34 credits when she went up to and Zach and Sam both had in the high 20s. Zach ended up graduating in three years from trying because of it. So, I mean, it's, it's a nice bonus. Yep. Toby, how about you? Do you have any idea? I don't know. Maybe like 18. She didn't take all the AP classes. No, but she took a damn good place. Yes, she did. Robert over here, wholesaler, has a has a couple legends that went through the AP program. Um, <laughs> have you any idea? Um, so they're, they're both in the upper 30s. So okay. Tate was able to easily pick up um, like a second degree. And of course, the Ivy League just gets you in the door. But she wouldn't have, wouldn't have been looking at it without all those scores. So I really appreciate all these people behind me helping her get there. Yep. And we have someone who's a relatively recent graduate, Kaylin, you had a few? Yeah, I, I graduated in 2018. I took out 18 credits from AP, was able to um, double major at Central, and then finish a year early. Wow. Prior chips? Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. <laughs> Kate's a former AP student. I think Bob was too, right? Well, no, it was like your first or second year, so you were just getting started. <laughs> Not our fault, though, is it? <laughs> but they had calculus in English. Yes. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions or comments? No, but thanks for what you guys do. I appreciate it, especially taking the initiative to really boost the students like that. That's a lot of savings. I, I taught AP, um, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I bet it is. So, my hat's off to you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Mr. Stevens, what, yes. how many years are AP classes offered? Just the senior year or junior? No, it, it, can, it can depend. Like, um, now we have some freshmen that are taking AP classes. It's primarily juniors and seniors, but it goes across the gamut. Yes. Most kids do two years as a sophomore, and then a bunch of classes as juniors and seniors. It's not uncommon for some kids to take five AP classes a junior senior, yeah. which is quite a, quite a schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, we'd love to have all of these 
teachers today, but they, I don't feel the need to, that they need to say if they would like to get up. I just see Don here. I mean, we have a really exciting meetings. <laughs> Next, we have the re request for public participation forms. I have one. Are there any others? Uh, Mr. Aubrey, you're up. You have three minutes. <laughs> um, this is my wife and I's uh, information that we were concerned with the school and the kids. Um, our daughter goes to middle school in eighth grade. Um, I'll just start here. Last year, when our daughter was in seventh grade, we were so excited that she was going to sing a solo at her choir concert. I've known the sound system in the high school has been bad for several years, but it really bothered us to have it cut out during our daughter's solo. All the band and choir students are held in the cafeteria, and I feel both the kids and the parents deserve better. This has been an issue, like I said, for several years. We need a new system. Um, next, I was made aware that several kids were turned away from sixth grade band this year starting due to some refusal to coordinate schedules by a couple of the principals. Music education has been scientifically proven to have an influence on motor language, social, cognitive, and academic performance. Additionally, music education has been shown to improve emotional well-being and with the increase in child and teen anxiety, I would think it would be a no-brainer that an emphasis should be placed on getting as many students involved in band inquire as possible. Sadly, it seems the athletes are given more funding and attention than the arts in schools. That needs to change. Lastly, I need to express how frustrated I am about the middle school lunchtime. 17% of the U.S. teens are obese, and I always hear about programs that aim to get kids more active. But they aren't even allowed to stand up at lunch other than to get their food. When I was in school, we were encouraged to go to the gym after we finished our lunches to let off some energy. These kids are warned to not get up or they are, will get detention. My wife even contacted the school only to be told that there are too many students to allow them to move around in the cafeteria. So let them go to the gym or let them go out in the yard with supervision. Um, the kids shouldn't have to suffer because of lack of staff. I'm sure, there, I'm sure there are some grandparents or retirees that would be happy to volunteer for lunchtime supervi supervisor positions. All right, thank you very that much. That's it, thank you. Uh, next we have the approval of the minutes from August 28th, 26th. Is there a motion? So, support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, approval of agenda additions or deletions? We have one addition to the personnel report, uh, resignation of a 31 and social worker uh, at the at Lakeland, uh, October, uh, effective October 4th. All right, thank you. Uh, next we have the consent agenda. Are there any communications? Yeah, Personnel recommendations. <coughs> Mr. Flynn. Um, be a result that relative to certified staff recommendations, the Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Jill Hardway as principal for Max Larson Elementary, effective September 16, 2024. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Robert Iwanaki for the fifth grade teaching position at Lakeland Elementary, effective September 16, 2024. Approve the administrative recommendation to employ Rebecca Simons as the teacher for the after school program at Coldwater High School, effective immediately upon board approval. And the Board of Education accepting with regret the resignation of Miranda Dominique from the first grade teaching position at Max Larson Elementary, effective September 27, 2024. Um, relative to support staff recommendations, the Board of Education um, accept the resignation of Lakeland's 31N social worker Jody Lytle, effective at the end of the day, October 4th. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Kawa 
Anajar for the part-time parent liaison position for Coldwater Community Schools, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Alan Fleming for the part-time RTC coordinator position at Lake Middle School, effective immediately upon board approval. The Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Cheryl Hoffman for the part-time bus monitor position, effective immediately upon board approval. And the Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation to employ Sarah Jones for the part-time bus monitor position, effective immediately upon board approval. And the Board of Education approved the administrative recommendation for the following extra duty position as outlined below, Ken Smokers, Varsity Girls Basketball Coach. Thank you. Did he resign the position? He had to for because of the retirement laws. Oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next we have the approval of the accounts for payment and financial statements via Dr. Lanford. Be it resolved that the following accounts for August be approved for payment as follows. General fund accounts in the amount of $2,621,000. $928.56 in special revenue accounts in the amount of $102,096.72. And be it resolved that the general fund financial statements be approved as presented. So there. Thank you. And next we have the acceptance and approval of gifts by Member Frederick. Um, uh, recently, the administration was made aware of the following gifts offered by the donors listed below. Recognition and approval for acceptance of the gifts are being sought. Southern Michigan Bank and Trust, monetary funds to be used as needed to CHS Cardinal Academy in the amount of $1,000. Troy Gruner, monetary funds for CHS National Honor Society in the amount of $600. CHS Interact Club, monetary funds from the ABC Challenge Participation Grant for Class Enrichment. Uh, to Alexis D'Alessandro for $200. Uh, Alpha Beta Sigma Phi, monetary <coughs> funds for the purchase of new books for incoming kindergarten and young five students. Uh, to Max Larson Elementary for $477. <coughs> Branch County Community Foundation, monetary funds from the Youth Advisory Council. Um, CHS Banking Club in the amount of $3,300. Additionally, the teachers listed below have received monetary funds from the Good Better Best Grant through the E.B. Klein Youth and Family Center. Kelly Murphy at Lakeland Elementary, $500. Amy Fedor at Lakeland, $300. Chris Hageman at Lakeland, $500. Alyssa Cornell at Lakeland, $500. Gail Rogers at Lakeland, $450. The gracious and continued support of the donors listed above is sincerely appreciated. We ask that the board accept the gifts gifts noted and acknowledge the donor's generosity. Be it resolved that the Board of Education greatly accepts the gifts as presented. Be it further resolved that a letter of appreciation on behalf of the board be sent to the donors indicated above for their worthwhile and generous gifts. Thank you, Dr. Frederick. That is a consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion passes. Next, we have the building reports. Uh, would the principals like to add anything? Very smart of you. Uh, the director of curriculum and instruction report is in there. Where did he go? Anything you want to add? Well, you just said they were smart for not saying anything, <laughs> so I guess I better follow suit. <laughs> I hope you're not planning on taking any credit for the APs. <laughs> I wouldn't think of it. Okay. The uh, board committee reports, did we have any? We did not. Okay. Superintendent's report. Um, earlier before the meeting, I handed you out a copy of my, my board report. Um, one of the one of the movements that we have going on uh, through cooperation with Calhoun ISD is upgrading our cybersecurity. Um, we're seeing, well, we, education is seeing more and more school districts uh, that are being hacked through um, insecure areas. So we have implemented online training for all staff uh, 
Calhoun ISD will begin phishing tests, uh, sending out emails to try to get uh, staff members to click on and open things that they shouldn't open, uh, and then that would be reported to us because that's how many of the hacks uh, in school systems um, get in. And we're also looking at the implementation of a multi-factor authentication protocol and a timeline. So that will be coming soon, but that, that will make it for our staff, just like when you go onto your banks, uh, online account, you have to either get a text or an email that will give you a code to then log into the system. Um, we're, we're continuing to learn and move, move forward with our, with our new uh, website and app. Um, still have some quirks in our emails, but it's getting better. At the beginning, a lot were getting bounced back because of firewall issues. Um, now that number is much, much lower, but we, we still have our technology department uh, looking into that because we'd love to be 100% um, when we send out an email. Robocalls, one of the uh, issues that we saw with robocalls, because the company is based in Arizona, the caller ID would say that it was coming from uh, Arizona, or, um, or was it Arkansas? It might have been Arkansas. And so people weren't, people weren't listening to the messages or they were blocking them. So um, I met with the company this past week and they said that they can absolutely get us a, a cold water number so more and more people will have access to that or be willing to listen to those robocalls. Will it come up cold water schools when it uh, caller ID? I'm hoping so. That's what we're trying for. That's what we're trying for. Um, Countywide Professional Development Day is coming up. Again, this is the second year that we, we've done this. Last year was a big success. Uh, it's Friday, October 11th. We'll be um, hosting it in the high school where individuals from all across the county, whether it's administrators, teachers, uh, or parapros, will be able to choose their own learning sessions. And many of the sessions will be led by co uh, county teachers and staff. So we're not really bringing in a lot of outside people. Um, it's really a grow your own type of thing. And um, it had a lot of good responses last year, so we're just continue, we're, we're hoping to continue that with our fall uh, professional development day and continuing to grow that. Uh, not much on the Aquatic Center. We have ongoing conversation with the city, but we're steadily moving forward. Um, and the superintendent's conference last week, again, thank you for allowing me to go to the conference. Uh, numerous sessions were related to bonds and sinking funds. So um, a lot of good new information, and, um, and there were a lot of vendors available of architect firms and, and other companies that work with bonds. And then there were some about legal updates and budgets and retirement uh, sessions that were, were very informative. So again, I just wanted to put that on there and thank the board again for allowing me the opportunity to go to the conference. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Uh, any discussion item? On that app, is there a spot for job postings? Because I saw them all laid out on our school website, but I have the app on my phone and I was looking to see, obviously, what we still have listed. And I couldn't find a spot. Is that just me? User I think you have, I think you have to somewhere? dig for it, but we can dig it close. Yeah. I just want to, with as many positions that schools have, Needing right. to be filled. Go ahead, Sean. I can brief you after the meeting. Show Where you. to find it? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. But if we can make it easier for people to find, that would be better. So, I'll do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Next, we have the action items. The first is the second reading and adoption of a revised policy about crowdfunding. The board's Policy Advisory Committee, along with the Superintendent Paul Flynn, met on August 14th of 2024 to review and rewrite the district's <coughs> existing crowdfunding policy. Be resolved, the Board of Education approves the recommendation from the Policy Advisory Committee to adopt the revised crowdfunding policy 6605 following the second reading as submitted. Is there a motion? So, support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have the request to approve the new proposed Cardinal Academy handbook. Uh, we got a separate email with the handbook in it, and it's also available, I think, in the board packet. 
Coldwater High School principal, Dr. Stephen Holt, and assistant principal, Mr. Brian Shirk, are requesting for approval of the new Cardinal Academy student handbook for the 2024-2025 school year. Be it resolved, the Board of Education approved the new Cardinal Academy student handbook for 2024-25 school year as presented. Is there a motion? Move. Support. Any further discussion? You look good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have a recommendation to approve the purchase of foam plyo boxes from Power Systems. Coldwater High School offers students the opportunity to participate in weight training elective course in grades 10, 11, and 12 to improve physical strength and conditioning. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the purchase of four sets of foam plyo boxes from Power Systems at a total cost of $5,980, which will be reimbursed by the athletic boosters as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Any discussion? When did they use those? Vertical jumping? Training, yeah. yeah. Jump from the floor. So, up to box. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that, Mr. Farmer? On what they use the boxes for? Yeah. yeah. There are different levels, different heights. So they either jump on, over, just for explosion to get their quickness. So they just leap up and land on top of it or over it or mm -hmm. on it, over it, sometimes on it. Yeah. The, the boxes that we currently have are wooden and um, quite old, and I think there's a lot of skin on those boxes from people. <laughs> so, and the, yes, and so with these being foam boxes, this it, it's, it's a lot safer. Thank you. So how long would they last? These ones. Hopefully, a lot. I mean, they're durable. They're, they're, I mean, just like any um, type of track equipment or something, they, they get the, the very durable um, coating on the outside of it. So it's not like you're jumping on a pillow. Um, so they're, they're solid. They just they have a little bit more. Not like styrofoam. No, no. It's, it's a hard foam. So if someone does fall on it, it's, it, it won't hurt them. Bad, bad as weather hurt one second. It'll last at least as long until I'm off the board. <laughs> and the boosters are reimbursing 100%? Yep. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The next regular meeting of the Board of Education will be held Monday, October 28th, 2024 at uh, 6 o'clock in the evening at the Administrative Service Center located at 401 Sock River Drive in Coldwater. Next, we have a request to conduct an executive session pursuant to PA 267, Section 8A, for the purpose of considering a periodic personnel evaluation of the employee. Roll call vote is recommended. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Yeah. Member Steele? Yes. Member Lyon Welch? Yes. Member Frederick? Yes. Member Lambert? Yes. Yeah. Member Holbrook is absent. Member Dean? Yes. Member Lake? Yes. We were in closed session. 